Thank you, Grace of Heaven, Virtues of Masters, Grand Predecessor, Grand Predecessor, Predecessor, and all transmitters, lecturers, to give me this opportunity to learn to speak. So today's topic what I'm doing is Yan Kui. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, Yan Hui was the most important and favorite disciple of Confucius. He was also one of the most revered figures of Confucianism. He came from the state of Lu, which was also the home state of Confucius. Yan Hui's courtesy name was Yan Yuan or Zi Yuan, and was later also known as Yan Su, Uncle Yan, or Yan Sun, Master Yan. His father, Yan Wu Yao, was one of the earliest disciples of Confucius. Yan Hui may have been a distant relative of Confucius from his mother's side. Yan Hui was 30 years, old, 30 years younger than Confucius and became his disciples when Confucius was in his 40s. Yan Hui grew up in a poor family, but he had an Im immense love of learning. He therefore never accepted an office position or pref and preferred prefer to be a disciple of Confucius. Confucius often praised Yan Hui for his noble, um, kind behavior and his lack of interest in material wealth. He only possessed um, a bamboo bowl, bowl, bowl and a gold cup of water in a shabby alley. For most people, they could not bear such sorrow, but for Yan Hui, he was never, it was never affected him and uh, continued his positive outlook of life. He was always content and never challenged Confucius in his teaching. This would often frustrate Confucius and let others to believe that he was somewhat simple-minded. However, after Confucius observed Yan Hui's conduct and realized that he was always imp implementing Confucius' teaching in his daily life, Confucius realized that he wasn't a fool. <laughs> to Confucius, Yan Hui was only, only one out of all his disciples who possessed moral characters closest to a gentleman and was, mo was a model of virtue and equal to himself. Confucius has seen Yan Hui's constant advancement and never saw him stop in his progress. For, for instance, Yan Hui would self-reflect each day on the ways of kind-heartedness. Confucius once said Yan Hui could attach his mind to goodness of, for three months without interruption, whereas others managed this way for only a short period of time. Confucius also believed that his di disciples were closer to him when Yan Hui was around. It might have been due to the amicable nature of Yan Hui or his ability to bring out the best quality in their master. Other disciples such as Zi Gong en envy Yan Hui for his ability to know all about a subject after only hearing one point. On one side, Yan Hui had had a very high spirit mind and compared himself to Shun, a saint ruler of the past. But on the other side, he was very simple, sincere, careful, and showed no trace of arrogance or self-satisfaction. Self In Taoism book, Zhuang Zi often mentioned Yan Hui and his way of thinking because he was admired as an enlightened being. He was there was a time when Confucius asked his disciples Yan Hui, Zi Lu, and Zi Gong of their aspiration. The master said, it marked your bravery after Zi Gong gave his answer. The master then said, they show your discriminating eloquence when Zi, Zi Gong, okay, the first one was Zi Lu, and then this one Zi Gong gave his answer. At last, Yan Hui answer, answered, I should like to follow an intelligent king and sage ruler who I might assist. I would spread among the people's instruction on the five great points and lead them on by the rules of proprieties and music so they should not 
care to fortify their cities by walls and moats, but would fuse their swords and spears in implements of agriculture. There should be no sundering of families, no willow or willowers. For thousands of years, there will be no calamities of war. You will have no opportunity to display his, his bravery or sir, to display his oratory. The master pronounced how admirable is this virtue. During the time when Confucius and his disciples were wandering from one state to another, Confucius and his disciples encountered difficulties in Quan, and Yanhui fell behind. When he rejoined his master, Confucius said, I thought you have died. And Yanhui replied, while you were still alive, how I presume to die. This demonstrates how respectful Yanhui was to Confucius. When Yanhui was 29 years old, his hair turned gray and died at an early age of 32. After the death of Yanhui, Confucius was in great sorrow and bl blamed heaven for the death of Yanhui by saying that heaven had destroyed him. When he was told by his disciples that he was showing excessive grief, Confucius replied, if I were not to mourn bitterly for this man, for who should I mourn? Confucius also said, he behaved towards me like a father. He constantly followed the master's instruction, gave up his self and followed the needs of proprieties in the shape of kind heartedness. When Confucius instructed him to the four avoidance or four don'ts, he see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil and do no evil. And Yan Hui vowed to follow this guidance. Years later after his death, Confucius would say, that no other disciples could take Yanhui's place, who was so gifted and delicate. Today, Yanhui is venerated at the Temple of Yanhui, which is located in Chufu, Shandong Province. Chufu. Yanhui's tomb is now surrounded by hundreds of tombs of his descendants, forming the Yan's family cemetery, also called Yan's Forest. The tomb is still well preserved. The end. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> so, um, we have a little time to finish up Sister Kerry's time. So, are there any questions or comments? So, so yeah. you say Yanhui is, uh, when he was passed away, is 32, age 32. Well, um, and he was younger. 30, That's 40, uh, 30 years old? 30 years, so years younger. younger than Confucius. Yeah. So when did he start uh, the disciple? Of, uh, when did he start? Yeah. I didn't find that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know like, how long he stayed with Confucius. Oh. Very young. I, th I heard like when he was a well, child. Didn't did you born. say when Confucius was 40, yeah, you he said became... Born. So he was become a... I, I was here like he was 10. <laughs> was 10. Yeah, like, I, yeah, I heard yeah. it's somewhere he around 10. Confucius not from age 10. Yeah. It's possible. It's possible. Right? So it's almost like a 20, the, like a 20 years, 22 years. Because yeah. Yeah, like I... Um, years, yeah. I look up different sources, and uh, one of the sources say he passed away in his 40s. Mm -hmm. But I listened to uh, Liu Jiansis, and he said he passed away at 32. So I put in 32. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so yeah, yeah. His head to gray at 29? Yeah. Wow. So, no, it was so not uncommon, really, because a lot of, uh, like, you know, Buddha, Anand, Ana, Ananda, Ananda, like Ananda. Yeah. You know, because they're related, they're cousins. Anand was very young, but he was, like maybe he was only 12, 15 when he, you know, went to that become Buddha's, Buddha's uh, disciple, you know that? Anand. But Anand's very young, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's a lot, you know, Buddha's a lot older than him. So, so it's not a child. You know, it's, it's, uh, that's good, you know, good karma for them. <laughs> Then he's missing, right? Who? Uh, missing? Yeah, he is nowhere to be found afterwards. Oh, no, well, they say, uh, you said, he's in the middle of the world. Yeah. No, he's in the middle of the world. 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 He's in the middle of the world.
那个 Gangi River 那个河，没一点，河河河河河河，它在空中。登山，因为人家是这样记录的，他说得三点的啦，没有没有身体，对，对对对，可惜，因为你是福嘛，他也是都是福嘛，对。Be good. <laughs> I heard this. Uh, someone said that Yan Hui has one daughter. Is that true? I, I think, I think he was married. Uh, I don't know, but I, I read another story about uh, San Qi Er San Ba Er Si San. That story. I don't know if you guys read it. Um. San Ba Si Er Si San. San Ba Er Si San, right? Yeah. And he, 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 in that story, he had, well, he, he was passing on the street and then uh, these two people were arguing and say like, um, this customer says three times eight is 23, oh. but the, the store owner says three times eight is 24. Yes, and then um, Yen Hui went up and then he said three times eight is 24. And then he said, who are you to say that? And then he said, then uh, he, you had to go to the, uh, Confuses yeah. and they confuses and then he's and they make it bad and say that if if he was right then he had to lose his head or something and then yeah and then if that guy was right then uh, if he would lose his um his hat or something and um so when he went to uh, confuses and confuses told that if he was wrong and then if he was upset <laughs> and then he went home. And then Yehui told, I mean, Confucius told him that he had to be careful about this, like, there's a thunder, so he don't go under the tree. Mm -hmm. He might get a uh, lightning Strikes. strike. Yeah. And then he was, because he was leaving pretty mad and he was holding a sword, he said, yeah. I think he mentioned yeah. something about don't kill anybody. Yeah. So on the way home, and then there was a thunder, and he went under the tree, and then he was just remember what his master said. So he quickly went out of the tree, and then he just, there's a lightning strike the tree and then the streets, the tree split open. Mm. And then he went back home and he saw uh, two shadows on the bed and he saw his wife is having a dog tree. And then he starts uh, drawing out his sword and then the, um, he just remember what um, his master said about, you know, don't try to kill people. And then when he turned on the light and then he saw his wife was with another um, sister. sister, his sister. I mean, uh, her sister. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then he went, and then he realized that he was surprised what, um, how Confucius predict all that stuff. So he went back, and then he stopped studying with him again. So, I don't know if this story is true, but <laughs> if if it is, I mean, people back then get married really early. Yeah, yeah. So if he passed away at thirty-two, I was suspect that he probably was married and then have kids, right? Descendants right now? Descendants? Well, in this, well, in the end, it's that he was buried among his descendants. Yeah. So everyone just... I don't know. I don't know about his descendants. Well, as long as he has one offspring, like one son or one daughter, then it's going to proliferate. Right, but... Current time. Current time. Well, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, if you if you Google Yan Hui, there's a lot of people saying Yan Hui. Like Yan Hui, you can do the research. Uh, Yan Hui, <laughs> Yan Hui, somebody. And actually, um, looking at his picture here, and some of them has a resemblance. Of <laughs> So I find it um, he looks so weird. He looks so calm and mellow. Yeah, he's, not he's not skinny. skinny. <laughs> and I thought he's skinny. in a poor family. I thought he was skinny. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I thought he was starving to death. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he... he, he well, maybe he, he ate the wrong stuff. He's full of, he's full <laughs> of contentment. Yeah. Full. Isn't he the one that, that was described that he was green and very skinny and starving? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was Did you find skinny. a wrong picture? Well, the thing is, people, you know, pain based on what's in their well, mind. Yeah, yeah, so maybe that that's the vision in their mind. He gave up everything. He doesn't care for it.